This is the design of a keypad or a keyboard with the entire alphabet that I've designed and made on a PCB. It has all the characters from A to Z and numbers from 1 to 0. But we also have the shift key, so we could send special characters, such as exclamation, question mark and so on. The PCB also has a return button, so we could delete text. An OK button that we could use for any other purpose and the send button, because I'm planning to make a future project related with Arduino and the radio chat, so stay tuned for that as well. The keyboard is compatible with any other microcontroller, because the output is already decoded and it will be sent using a WART or I2C communications, which are already standard. I will also provide a short user manual below about this board, in order for you to know how to use it and what you will receive for each key. So all you have to do is to connect it to the Arduino for example, and start receiving data with the WART port. So let's see how I've made this PCB, what components I've used and why, and how to use it. I really hope that you will see this project very useful, and I'm also planning to maybe sell this board if I get a good feedback. But anyway, make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. And also thanks to all my patrons for supporting the entire channel. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. The design of this board is quite simple. The circuit is based on this keypad, and I'm quite sure that you already know this keypad. This one has 4 columns and 4 rows. But also the output are 8 connections. But in my case, my keyboard has 4 rows and 10 columns, so we could have a total of 40 buttons, but the output are just 2 pins. The working principle of this is very easy. You don't need any pull-up resistor for each button or any other connection, and it goes like this. We place the buttons in a matrix format, and we connect the columns to some digital pins, and then the rows to other digital pins. The rows will always apply a high pulse in a sequence, meaning that we apply a pulse to the first row and we don't apply it to the rest. Then we apply it to the second and so on, and finally we start over. Imagine that now I press this button here. This high pulse will now have a closed circuit to the column 7 digital pin. So all the microcontroller has to do is to detect when any of the columns is high and at the same time which row was activated, and by that we know which of the buttons was pressed. In this way we could control 40 buttons, but using only 14 digital pins of the Arduino. And yes, I'm using the Arduino for this project. On the back of the PCB I've placed the Atmega 328 microcontroller, and this will decode the matrix and then it will give the characters on this WART or i 2 pins. So I've made my circuit using Easy EDA, and as you can see it is quite simple. 40 buttons for the matrix and this extra button here that won't work with the keypad interruption. We have the minimal configuration of the Atmega chip and some pads for the power and serial output. I've made the PCB to have the size to fit well in my hands. It is 12 by 6.8 cm, so it's not that big. As for the buttons, I don't recommend you to use these common momentary push buttons. These are hard to push, and also have a click, which is not very good for a keypad where you want to type a lot. What I wanted are some very soft buttons, and I found these ones, which are made with silicone. They have a connection inside, and when we press the silicone part, the pads will close the circuit. This will give the keyboard a better touch and also better look, and will be much easier to use than using common push buttons. I've made the PCB round, and also placed 4 vias of 3mm, in case that I will later want to screw this inside of a case for example. When the design was finished, I run the design rule check. It's important to follow the rules of the manufacturer, otherwise you might have problems when printing the boards. So as you can see I have no errors, so now I can click the Generate Gerber button, and I order the PCBs from GLC PCB, which is the sponsor of this video. This button will take you to the glcpcb.com, and the Gerber will be uploaded to the page. When the upload is complete, you can select what settings you want. I want to order 5 PCBs. I also want my board to be black colored, so I select the black solder mask. If you're not sure, on the same page, you can click the View Gerber button, and here you can select the color that you want and see the one that you like best. Finally, I select the thickness of 0.16cm, and I click the Save to Cart button. 
on the checkout I pay with PayPal because that's easier for me and I select the normal shipping because it is a lot cheaper. So for only $8 I can get my PCBs. I received the boards in Spain in around 12 days. I can already see a small error that I've made. I forgot to add the special characters aside of the numbers, such as the question mark and so on. But don't worry, I will do that for a future better version. I should also make the thickness of the text a little bit bigger, in order to see it better. So I first solder the SMD components on the back of the PCB. The Admega chip, the 16MHz crystal, some resistors and capacitors and a small LED. In a future version I would also like to add another LED on the front side of the PCB, in order to show when the shift key was pressed or not. So now I get all the push buttons. The holes on the PCB have exactly the size of the buttons, so in just a minute I can add all the buttons. So now I solder all the pads and the board is finished. So now we have to program it, so let's take a look at the code. First you have to make sure that you download and install the Adafruit keypad library. I provide the links for that below. We must define the amount of columns and rows, in my case 10 columns and 4 rows. Next we have to create the character vector and by that we will say what character will occupy each space of the matrix. Finally we have to define the pins of the rows and columns. We need 14 digital pins. In the void loop each time a new button was pressed, I store that value and send it to the ward port, on the digital pin 0 and 1 of the Arduino. But if the shift key was pressed, I sent a different character for the comma, exclamation, question mark and so on. To upload the code to the board, we need this kind of FTDI programmer. You could find this on eBay for a few dollars. Connect the TX, the RX and the DTR pins of the wart pads on the back of the PCB. Also connect ground and power. Now connect the USB cable and upload the code. Now let's connect this to another Arduino and see what we receive. For that I get another Arduino and an LCD screen. I solder the wires for 5V, for ground, RX and DX pins from the keyboard. I connect the pins to the wired port of the Arduino. Now I create another basic code, and this code each time it receives a new serial data will print that onto the LCD screen. So I upload the code to the Arduino and let's test it. As you can see I can set the characters from A to Z and also the numbers. I can also receive the instructions for send, return or ok buttons. But now if I press the shift button and now I press the number 6 for example, I will receive the question mark. At the same time with the shift key I can send the uppercase of each character. So I've made another example that will store each character and by that create words. I can now create text and use this for any other of my projects. So once you have the idea you could use this with your project. So that's how the keyboard works. I will have to make a few changes and make it look better, I will add the shift key LED and improve it the best that I can. For now I'm sharing the Gerber files, the schematic and the code on my Patreon page, so if you are a patron of mine you could get all the files and make your own. I will probably share the project for everybody soon, but for now I'm working on opening a new store on my new website for creators, which by the way I recommend you to check out. Create an account and you can share your own tutorials. It is very easy to use and might help your work and at the same time help other creators, and you could create your own community of creators. We have already more than 800 users in just a couple of days. So stay tuned for more information about this board. I might order a pick and play service and have this board on my own store, but I'm not sure yet. But using the information given in this video and with this very easy design, maybe you could make your own keyboard. I hope that you learned something new about this metrics based keyboard and how to make one. Stay tuned for more with this board soon. If you like this video make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell in order to see future videos. A huge thank you to all my patrons as well, so thanks again and see you later guys.